This is Fantasy Fling, and we are looking back at the Battle Royale drafts. What won it? Week 3 NFL DFS. So let's get into it. All right, so what we have was actually a naked Lamar lineup that took it down. So you could see Lamar, he doesn't have Zay Flowers. He doesn't have Bateman. I definitely did not have Mark Andrews. No Isaiah Likely. So he got there, though. Uh, he did a lot of rushing, and I like this build. I actually had a, a naked Lamar build myself in the Dog Bowl. And the reason I like it is you're not forcing your pass catchers. If you can get Zay Flowers awesome um you know if you believe it's going to be one of the tight ends awesome but you're not forcing it you're just really uh attacking different areas of the draft uh with your running backs your wide receivers you get your tight end that you like and you're able to get lamar and just say hey you know he could get there on his legs and that's exactly what happened so this lineup had saquon barkley going against New Orleans, who smashed it. What I love about this is he was great leverage off of Devonta Smith. In fact, on this channel, I talked about um, Dallas Goddard as being potential leverage off of Devonta Smith. So that's really the way I think you need to think of these drafts. When you're seeing players going in the first round and they're going you know, immediately with one of the first several picks, um, or they're just going higher, much higher than they normally would, I think that's really like a good sign that most of the field is going to be on them. They're going to be 100% drafted. So you can look for leverage spots. You like that game environment, but you like a different player in that game who could potentially get the touchdowns, get the volume. Those Devonta Smith lineups will essentially be dead. You have the Dallas Goddard. You have the Saquon Barkley lineup that can really leverage the field. So I love that. And uh, by the way, guys, if you like this kind of content, these reviews, hit that like button. Let me know. If you played Battle Royale, let me know how that went for you. Um, you won money, you lost money, what stack you went with, you know, who was like your core player. Let me know how it went in the comments. But yeah, we had Barkley and Charbonnet. I thought Charbonnet was in a really good spot. It's kind of the same thing. Everyone was trying to get Devin H on early, and I just didn't think it was a very good spot for him being a, a running back who's on a team that's an underdog um, with a, a very young, inexperienced quarterback. They're big underdogs. I, just a little silly Charbonnet on the other side of that. You have a team that's favorite at home. He's a really good running back. Walker was out. He was going to get the bulk of the carry. So he was a guy that I really liked. He was one of my undervalued players and ended up taking down the battle Royale. And then uh, Juwan Jennings, this is another player. It's kind of the same thing, right? Jordan Mason, uh, Brandon, Ayuk. everyone is on them. I think what I want to do is I want to take the guy in the last round that can get all the touchdowns and couldn't really set my lineup apart from the rest of the field. So a lot of times with your last round pick playing the battle Royal draft, a large field GPP of 68,000. I think that's kind of what you want to look at. Like, yeah, it, this could be a throwaway, my last pick of this draft, but uh, this is also like a spot where I can really leverage the field and I can win the 30,000. And then Malik neighbors, he's a guy that we obviously need to be on every single week. Um, just because he's that kind of freak wide receiver that should be in consideration. The Justin Jeffersons, this, um, Jamar Chase is the CD Lambs, that type of wide receiver. Um, that's definitely what he's proven to be so far. And I think we'll continue to see from Malik Neighbors. And then Trey McBride, you know, tight ends, they bust a lot. And that's why I think it's it's plus EV overall to wait on tight end if you can. Definitely not taking one with my first couple picks. Um, but if you get a good value and a good matchup, you see you know, why you can really get there because there were plenty of tight ends that outscored McBride. And of course he went pick number seven. So looking at this lineup, he went at the end of the first, I'm guessing. So yeah, this looks like this player, uh, Jay Garcia took Saquon and then Trey McBride back to back. And then if I had to guess, he took Lamar next pick 18. Um, neighbors went 31. Charbonnet went 19. So yeah, he took Lamar Charbonnet and then um, he took neighbors, uh, Juwan Jennings and neighbors. So started out Barkley, McBride, Lamar, Charbonnet, Juwan Jennings and neighbors. So neighbors was his last pick. Pretty good stuff. See what second place did. Similar lineup. Um, same thing. We got that leverage, the Saquon and Devonta Smith leverage. 
got Henry. So he did have a little stack here with Henry. Typically, you don't want to play those two together. But in this high scoring game, they didn't cannibalize each other. And that's nice. And then, uh, yeah, he had Harrison and uh, Neighbors. Looks like there weren't really any other. Yeah, so he had the two stacks there. So secondary, he had Lamar plus Henry. And then he has secondary stack of Saquon and Dollar Scottert. Let's see what third place did. He had Lamar and Andrews. So this poor guy, this is kind of what I was saying. You know, you got the stack, right? But he got a zero and came within four points of first place. So if he picks anyone else besides Andrews, sometimes it's just best just not to force the stack because Andrews is not playing enough snaps, not really doing anything at this point. And then, um, I like the Kyron Williams play. It's the same mindset leverage off of the Jordan Mason, the Brandon Ayuk lineups because they were being drafted high. So I love that. And the same thing with Joan Jennings. So guessing he got, yeah, he took Kyron and Jennings at the end of his drafts. I mean, what a way to knock it out of the park. Went Saquon at seven. Who did he take? Uh, Lamar 18. Oh, Amon Ra. Yeah, Amon Ra at six, Saquon at seven. So went uh, wide receiver, running back. Went and got Lamar at 18. I'm um, guessing he took Andrews at 19. Yep. And then um, it would have been Kyron and Jennings. Wow. I mean, if you could put a zero up and still place third, get 7,500, pretty awesome. Let's look at, I got a couple more of these and then we'll wrap this up. Now, this was the Jalen to Dallas Goddard lineup, and I love it because it's Dallas Goddard was kind of one of my calls on this channel. Um, in fact, that's a video that I drop every week. Uh, just one of the under like three or four of, of the undervalued plays that I really like that I really think you could leverage the field. Dallas Goddard was one of them this week for me. So I love seeing him there with that stack. Everyone's looking to go Jalen Hurts to Devonta Smith. No, I'm going to do Jalen Hurts to Dallas Goddard, who could obviously get a lot of targets with AJ Brown being out. And it's already a condensed offense, so it's condensed even more. He had a great catch and run. And this had take one Barkley. So that was the other piece. So Hurts, Barkley, and Dallas Goddard. And then we had another stack here, Malik Neighbors and Amari Cooper. And then that Kyron Williams play who went at the end of the draft. So it looks like he took Saquon third. Really liked Saquon this week. I love that bold going right for it. Um, came back and got Jalen at 10. Neighbors went 22. Amari went 34. Goddard went 15. So he got Goddard pretty early. So uh, Saquon, um, Hertz, Goddard. So he got a stack right away. And then, you know, got Neighbors, Cooper, uh, Neighbors, Kyron, and uh, Cooper all back to back to back there. So. Good for him. Great lineup. And let's look at the last one. Dak Prescott and uh, Dallas Goddard. That was, it wasn't like there is a single stack here. So, oh yeah, Dak Prescott and then had to bring back with Henry. So two players from the same game. That is a game stack. And then Tennessee versus Green Bay, Detroit, Arizona, San Fran. So yeah, that's that's the the only stack in that one. But, uh, you know, the, the idea here is taking Henry Favorite running back, good spot, high team total. Um, Tony Pollard crushed him. Maybe he drafted early in the week before he knew Spears was going to play. I don't know. It's hard to say. Amon Ra, um, good play. And then Juwan Jennings. So leveraged that uh, Ayuk to Mason play. So that's going to do it for this week. You know, overall, not the most profitable I guess we can kind of look at my lineup here. Not the most profitable, the most profitable uh, week for me was on some of the right plays, um, but had a little bit too much Iuke in Mason in my early drafts, so that kind of crushed me. Um, did have Goddard in some of my drafts, and that's nice, but you really need to kind of have a complete lineup. Um, but that's why we like to look back at these contests and see what's working and uh, see what we can take going forward into our drafts. And um, yeah, I will be back tomorrow going to do a first look in live drafts. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. 
And uh, of course, we got a lot more underdog fantasy coming your way. If you like under, if you like DFS, um, you never played on underdog fantasy before, give it a try. Use code fantasy football fling for 100% deposit match up to a thousand dollars. I will put the link in the video description. So thanks for joining. See you soon.